Hello everyone. Uh, good, uh, good night. Uh, my name is Malak. I'm uh, replacing uh, Gergis tonight. He, uh, he is not able to join, unfortunately, because he has an important meeting. He apologized for that. And we are going to go through uh, our uh, Coptic uh, language and uh, we are going to go through uh, some new topic uh, tonight. Uh, I hope just to adjust first my camera tonight. Let me just change my background. Okay, so hopefully this is better. Uh, let us start with praying, please. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Thank you, our Lord, for this opportunity that we gather tonight to study our Coptic language and Coptic rites. Please, our Lord, continue with us. Please place our meeting. Uh, thank you, Lord, for your incarnation. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation. Thank you, Lord, for your crucifixion. Thank you, Lord, for your resurrection. We ask you, our Lord, to bless our service, our church, our families, and our kids. Uh, give us the wisdom and a clear understanding to understand the Coptic language and to bless uh, and to be able to teach the other uh, our Coptic uh, Church Coptic language through the intercession of the, the Holy Holy Spirit, both Saint Mary and all the choir of the saints. Please hear us when we pray. Thank you, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us the our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one in Christ Jesus our Lord, for signs of kingdom, power, for God and ever. Amen. Let's, let me uh, share my screen. And please stop me anytime if you have any question. So we are going to review what we have so far with the Coptic lesson. And please unmute yourself and let us try to go through this uh, all, all together. So I don't know the names. So I, I would like each one of you uh, uh, read one, one, one letter and pronounce it and then say an example in, in, in English. And if you know uh, example in, Cop in Coptic, please let us do that. Let us start one by one. Go ahead, Mary. Alpha yes. and art. And art. Do this is a first a Coptic letter, alpha. And pronunciation like A, R. Do, do you know any 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 Coptic letter that start with alpha, Mary? No. No, no Coptic letter, no Coptic word like adios, for example, start with uh, with alpha. Oh Abba, Abba, Abba. Abba, Abba. Ava, good, very good start with, with Alpha as well. So second one, please, let, let us again, let us try to say to say the uh, letter and the uh, pronunciation and an example uh, in English and hopefully in, in, in Coptic if you have, if you know one. So second, please, second one, second. Yeah. Uh, Bita. Yeah. In the pronunciation is like uh, uh, v, like v, v, it depending on the, uh, if I think the uh, vowel follows it or no. Or exactly, that... yeah, exactly. If a vowel uh, follows it, then we pronounce that as a V, like vowel. Yes. If, if it came without vowel, at the end of the, lit at the, end of the word, it, it is as V, bell or boy. Yes. So, do you have any example, Jamie? Hmm. Uh, uh, well, um, uh, no, I can't think of one now. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, okay. But what, uh, huh? We can use the same example we use for uh, Alpha, Abba. Oh, Abba. Like, uh, yes. Abba, Abba, it is a father. Yes. Abba is a father. It is pronounced as a V. Yes. yes. There is another example. Neep, neep. It is pronounced as a master. It is also we we pronounce the beta as b. Okay, 
the third one, please. Can someone uh, help with the third one? Yeah, Peter. Uh, gamma. No, not before gamma. The the fourth, the third one. Oh, I can't remember which is third. Can you see my screen? Yes. Oh, uh, third on the screen. Um. E. E exactly. Um, in a uh, an ing you uh, an English word that begins with the sound uh, enter. Yes, exactly. Uh, do do you, do you remember any Coptic words start with e? No, I need to review. <laughs> okay, okay. Any anyone else need uh, remember any Coptic word that start with e? N? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's good. Is N? N start with E. How how about we when we say Gen? Gen. Gen. Gen tenmiti or Gen. Fiwasatna. There is a lot of our name with. with. Is web or so there is so many words that start or came with the word with the letter E. The first one, can someone say the first letter to, to tonight from lesson one? Uh, Z Zeta. Zeta, very good. How we pronounce uh, that? It says uh, like a Z, like a zebra. Like a Z, like a Z zebra or zoo. Yeah. Do you do you know any 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 Coptic word? Can't remember anything right this minute. I'm okay, sorry. no problem. Uh, there is a word called zenzen, zen, like lizard. Yes, zenzen, zen, zen. that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Zen, zen. Okay, let us review lesson two. Listen to who is next? First first line and uh, listen to. Uh, go, two participants raise hand, okay. Peter, Mary, go ahead, Mary. Yota. Yota, yeah. How we pronounce it's, that? It's like an I. Like an I. And example in English? Sit. Sit, yeah. Do you know any Coptic example? No, not right now. Okay. Someone raise hand. Okay, who is next? Okay, Andrew, go ahead, Andrew. Kappa, and it's pronounced as a K. Kappa pronounced as a K. Uh, do we know any example? Kiria Laison. Kiria Laison, very good. Very good. Yeah, Kiria Laison. Thank you. Uh, Dina, the second one, next one. May. May it's like a letter M, M. and yeah. an example is moon. Example is what moon in English. This is an English example. Do you know? Do you know any? You know Coptic example, Coptic letter, Coptic word. Not at the moment. Okay, like when we say maf, um, maf, tamaf, mama, mama. Yeah, mom. yeah, exactly. Thank you, mom. Okay, so, so that's a. Different. yeah, nay, yeah, go ahead. It's pronounced N, and okay. English is near, and in Coptic is no free shy. Very good, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let us go another step further. Lesson three, second one, who can. Who still didn't say anything with us to, tonight? Amel? Amel? Karas? Okay, go ahead. Um, I can't see your screen currently, but um, um, like, can you, like, can you spell like, it? Like, I cannot. You cannot see it right now. I can't see the screen, but I can see your um camera, like 
Oh, really? Okay. Everybody else can can you see screen? Can you? Yeah. See? Okay. Yes, yeah, we can yeah. see letters. Yeah. Tab, do you remember any word? Uh, do you remember any letter from lesson three? Uh, I think I wasn't there that time, but probably Zita. Zen -zen? Zita, Zita. Zita is good, but from lesson one. But that's fine. Do you remember any 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 Coptic word start with Zita? Okay, that sounds good. Good. Okay, uh, Nadia. Yeah. Can you can you say the first letter? Here sure. O. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Pronounce. Uh, it's like not in English, but okay. I don't know. Uh, it's not axios. I was gonna say axios, but no. Um, a Coptic word. I can't. Okay. No. Do you you don't uh, we didn't have any. Any word start with O in, in mind, that's fine, that's fine. But we can say choice. God, our, our, yeah. our Lord, choice, choice. It has an O. Uh, mm -hmm. There is also a O. But there is a lot of a lot of words that has a O that uh, Gergis can also review next time with you. But let us, let us now go through more uh, letters right now. Uh, who can say the next one? Go ahead, Jan. Sima. Sima, uh, very good. Sima uh, is S sounds S, but it looks yeah. like C. Uh, I let's see. I thinking of an example. Um, Gosh, I don't know. Um, I don't have example. It's uh, in Coptic. I don't uh, uh, can't think of one. Uh, but it's a uh, city or sounds like city. Do you know a small ape choice? Start with Sima. Oh. But with, with Jenkin. It's, it's Sima, but with Jenkin. Small ape choice. Oh. Uh, that when we uh, we we pronounce that always in the uh, or or we chant that always with tasbih, a small choice. Okay, oh. that sounds great. The next one, Andrew. Tav pronounced as a P in Thai shoy. Ta, uh, very good. Tav pronounced as T. An example is Thai shori. That's really great. The one, the last one in this uh, page. Oh. Can see the last one in this page. Beher, Beher, Beher Fanus. Beher, can you see the last one in this page? Oh. Oh. Sounds as uh, OA sound, like board. Okay. Do you remember any word? I'm thinking. Um, okay. Nothing in my mind right now. Okay, when we say Zoksa, Batri, K, I, K, G, U, K, Agyu, Nihmati, when we say the word K, Agyu, it is end with the letter U. But yeah, mm -hmm. or when we say uh, E, Unon, I mean, it has also twice this word, uh, letter U. But yeah, that's, that's okay. Let us, did we also take this in last week, correct? Okay. We have, huh? Okay, which we have another three letters that we got last week. Ita. Okay, let's uh, say one by one. Uh, who didn't say anything to tonight? Please, please raise your hand and please try. Rafi, Rafi, basta. Yes. Go ahead. 
say the first one, please. And if you have an example, that would be fine. And this is uh, Ita? Yes. Uh, the letter E, or pronunciation E, and an example in English could be like uh, hi. Okay. Hey. Um, or feet. Feet, yeah. Um, and Coptic. Uh, I'm not sure what to say. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it has this letter Yuta, Ita, uh, before the end. Uh, alpha, me, Ita, and Ne. I mean, you, you recognize mm -hmm. this one? I mean, yes. Okay, it's oh, very okay. famous one. Very famous one. <laughs> Everybody knew it. Okay. <laughs> so, next one, next letter, please. Uh, go ahead, Peter M. Go ahead, Peter. Peter, you raised your hand. Okay, Dina, go ahead. Uh, Ro? Yeah. It looks like a P, but it's an it's an R. It's pronounced like an R. It's yes. it's like an O. Uh, it's like road. Like road. An example in Arabic. Example in Coptic, if you can, that would be great. Um, I don't know. Okay, when we say Kyrios, it has this letter, it has this row, and we see it as a P, but it is pronounced as R, Kyrios, or we erof. Or Tiro, there is a lot of letters that this will go through. Kerialison. Kerialison. Yeah, very good. Kerialison. Yeah, exactly. So the last one is a little tricky. I need someone who can read the three options for the last one. Who can do that? Yeah, Karas, go ahead. Can you guys hear me? Yes, go ahead, Karas. No, no, no. This is Peter and this is Peter McCormick. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Peter. Okay, sorry. Okay, I can read P. The last one, the last one in this page. Is it like key? Yeah, like key. Yeah, exactly. Key, like key, Berto. Key, Berto, yeah. And it's a uh, K like in English. Yeah, and oh. also pronounced like Arabic Kha, correct? Ah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Do you have do you have do you have a khir or khiar or cucumber? Uh, yeah. do you have any example that pronounce as a kha? Khin Fran. Khin Fran. Khin Fran. Yeah, Khin Fran. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. Do you have any example that pronounce as uh Sherry Maria? Sherry Maria, yeah, very good. Very good. So these are the the Coptic letters that we have so far from the first four lessons. Next time, uh, Gergis will go with a new letter for Gamma. And again, Delta, these are the letters that has different uh, meaning and uh, different pronunciation, uh, depend on where it appears in, in, the, in the world. So I, I will leave that for uh, Gergis next time. And uh, we have uh, enough time, about uh, 30 minutes now, for the main topic that I'm going to talk about today. How, how many of you knows about something called apologetics? If you hear about apologetics, yeah, raise your hand. Yeah, okay. What's Karas. apologetics? Yeah, uh, Karas, what, what do you know about apologetics? Karas, can you hear me? Karas? Uh, I can hear you. Yeah. I can hear you. Um, it's basically a, apologetics. Apologetics is basically when you apologize to um, people, yeah? No, this is exactly, no, this is an opposite to what we mean by apologetic, but we will come to this point, actually. Let me, let me tell you exactly what apologetics mean. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, very good. Yes. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start with something. It is very important topic to to talk with easiest people or people who don't believe in God, and give them some argument about existence of God of God. And let me let me first uh, make that into slideshow. So today we are gonna talk about very important argument called the moral argument. And the moral argument is one of the arguments for the existence of God. We will talk about little by little what does mean uh, argument and how we prove to someone who doesn't believe in God that God exists through something we can all understand. So let us first read from Peter, 1 Peter 3.15, these uh, verses. And this is actually the core of the apologetics, this verse or this uh, letters from uh, St. Peter. He said, but sanctify, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Again, be always ready to give a defense. It's important to remember that. Always ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope that is in you. That's why we are asking about apologetics. Uh, yes, we are going to do Kahoot about apologetics, hopefully. So what apologetics mean? Apologetics is not to say you are sorry. This is completely different. Apologia is a Greek word for defense, as in a court of law. If you study law, there is a word called apologia. It's a Greek uh, word called defense. Christian apologetics is how to defend what the Bible teaches. Again, we are defending what the Bible teaches, especially with people who has no belief. Okay? Let me tell you how we do that. First, we have to be gentle and respectful with people who don't believe in God. We have to send to, to, to give them a message about Jesus, about Christianity. And we have to give that in a gentle and respectful way. We have to defense without being defensive. Important. We have to give argument without to be argumentative. We don't we try to, to, to make a lot, of, a lot of things that make to them very complicated. Argument means a series of statements leading to a conclusion. I will give you an example in a minute. Good argument means less anxiety. Let us see what argument means. Let's say I give you very basic closing. Go ahead, Philo, you have a question. Hello, do you have a question? You ask me to turn off the camera from... Okay. Very good. Okay, I did that. Okay. So what does argument mean? Argument mean I give you premise called the premise one. I give you premise two and then follow a conclusion. Premise mean I give you like uh, a statement or uh, something that we all agree is a correct, and then give another statement or another argument, and then the conclusion will follow. Let me give you an example. So if the premises are true and they are logically lead to the conclusion, so give give an give an example. What what is this? This is a, a, an example of a car. Let me give you an, a premise here. Premise number one: All cars have wheels. We all agree about that, correct? This is premise number one. Premise number two: This picture for a car. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion: This has a wheel. Do you all agree about this premise and conclusion? Again. All cars have wheels. We all agree. This is a car. We can see that. So the conclusion that this should have wheels. Yeah, Jaime, go ahead. 
You raise your hand. Oh, it's it. I just say this looks logical. Yes, exactly. This looks logic. Very good. Thank you. This. Let me show you another example, Jaime. That is not Dina. Go ahead. Let me show you. Show you the car kind of looks weird. That uh, looks weird. Yeah, I will change the picture of this car. Sorry. Let me give you an example that is not look uh, logical, uh, Jaime. Here, another example, but not not logical one. Premise number one: Everything with four legs is living. Do you agree with that? Someone, someone yes. answer. No. Do you agree with that? No. No, we don't agree because this one has no. has four legs. So this table has four legs. Is it living? Is it yes. living? Is no. this a living thing? Yes. No. No. This no. Is because this yes. is this is not logic. This is bad, bad logic, bro. Which one is bad? The first one or the second one or the conclusion? The second one. Second. Second and conclusion for the second. Okay. Which one is second. which? Which promise is wrong? The first one or the second one? Oh, the first one. Second. The first one. I uh, bravo. That's good. The conclusion. The first one is wrong, but the second one is correct. So the conclusion is also wrong. Okay. Let us today to talk about something called. Can you be good? Okay. Let us talk about or see this video five minutes and then conclude. Uh, continue. Can you be good without God? Let's find out. Can you hear it? Absolutely astounding. There you have it. Undeniable proof that you can be good without believing in God. But wait. The question isn't, can you be good without believing in God? The question is, can you, can you be good without God? See, here's the problem. If there is no God, what basis remains for objective good or bad, right or wrong? If God does not exist, objective moral values do not exist. And here's why. Without some objective reference point, we have no way of saying that something is really up or down. God's nature provides an objective reference point for moral values. It's the standard against which all actions and decisions are measured. But if there's no God, there's no objective reference point. All we're left with is one person's viewpoint, which is no more valid than anyone else's viewpoint. This kind of morality is subjective, not objective. It's like a preference for strawberry ice cream. The preference is in the subject, not the object. So it doesn't apply to other people. In the same way, subjective morality applies only to the subject. It's not valid or binding for anyone else. So, in a world without God, there can be no evil and no good. Nothing but blind, pitiless indifference. God has expressed his moral nature to us as commands. These provide the basis for moral duties. For example, God's essential attribute of love is expressed in his command to love your neighbor as yourself. This command provides a foundation upon which we can affirm the objective goodness of generosity, self-sacrifice, and equality. And we can condemn as objectively evil, greed, abuse, and discrimination. This raises a problem. Is something good just because God wills it, or does God will something because it is good? The answer is neither one. Rather, God wills something because He is good. God is the standard of moral values, just as a live musical performance is the standard for a high fidelity recording. Without your love. The more a recording sounds like the original, the better it is. Likewise, the more closely a moral action conforms to God's nature, the better it is. But if atheism is true, there is no ultimate standard. So there can be no moral obligations or duties. Who or what lays such duties upon us? No one. Remember, for the atheist, humans are just accidents of nature, highly evolved animals. But animals have no moral obligations to one another. When a cat kills a mouse, it hasn't done anything morally wrong. 
the cat's just being a cat. If God doesn't exist, we should view human behavior in the same way. No action should be considered morally right or wrong. But the problem is, good and bad, right and wrong, do exist. Just as our sense experience convinces us that the physical world is objectively real, oh. our moral experience convinces us that moral values are objectively real. Every time you say, hey, that's not fair, that's wrong, that's an injustice, you affirm your belief in the existence of objective morals. We're well aware that child abuse, racial discrimination, and terrorism are wrong for everybody, always. Is this just a personal preference or opinion? No. The man who says that it is morally acceptable to rape little children is just as mistaken as the man who says two plus two equals five. What all this amounts to then is a moral argument for the existence of God. If God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. But objective moral values and duties do exist. Therefore, God exists. Atheism fails to provide a foundation for the moral reality every one of us experiences every day. In fact, the existence of objective morality points us directly to the existence of God. How do you like this video? Very good. Very good. Okay, we will discuss this video uh, step by step. And if we have time, we will we will show it again. It's a five minute video, but it will tell us a lot of things about existing of God from moral values, moral argument. Like if we say to one another, this is bad or good, we are saying that because we believe in God. We have to distinguish between something good and something bad because we believe in God. Let's see what this video tell us today. So can you believe? Can you be good without believing in God? Can you be good without? Yes. Okay. Why yes? Because you can go, because a stranger can just go up to a cat and save him out of a tree. Anybody can go help anybody up. Okay. It happens but, but all the time. The, it's too common. Yeah. The definition of good and bad, we will discuss we will discuss the definition of good and bad based on the morality. Let us say, say that. Let us discuss that first and then come back to this point. But yeah, the atheist saying that exactly as you are saying, we can, there could, could, be, could be something good without God. This is what the atheists are saying. This is how we defend that or how we give some argument about that. Okay, let us, what is our argument here? The moral argument for existing of God, as we discussed before, two premises and one conclusion. Let us discuss one premise at a time. If God does not exist, objective moral value and duties do not exist. Do you agree with that? First one, this first one, do you agree or no? Yes. Okay, very good. But objective moral values and yes. duties yes. do exist. Do you agree with the second one? Objective moral values and duties do exist. Do you agree with that? Yes. No. No. Why? Yes. Yes. What? Yes or no? Kind of. Kind of. So if we agree about the first one, and we will go through one by one right now. But let us discuss this. If we agree the first one is correct and the second one is correct, then the, therefore God exists. We are giving that to an atheist, to someone who don't believe in that. But how 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 we how we can you please uh, can you stop your uh, mic while I'm talking? can you mute yourself can you, okay when I ask you a question okay thank you okay let us discuss the first one. If God does not exist, objective moral value and duties do not exist. So, why why this is correct? Why this is correct premise? So, what does mean subjective? What does subjective mean? We say here the word objective versus the word subjective. The subject is something that everyone agree 
versus objective moral value. So su subject is, is, is related to subject, related to me, related to myself, related to my opinion. Objective is something common or something sim uh, that everyone agree about. So if I say this, I like ice cream, is that subjective or objective? Um, subjective. Bravo, very good, that is subjective. Oh, so yeah, that is subjective based on my opinion, based on my opinion. If I say the weather is hot today, is that something subjective or objective? Objective. Subjective. Objective. Wait a minute. Objective. Objective. Why it's objective? Because everyone can agree. Everyone can go outside and check the weather. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? If I say killing someone is something bad, is that something objective or subjective? Uh, objective. If I say killing, objective. killing, subjective. killing, the killing itself is something objective or subjective? Killing someone. Objective. 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 <laughs> don't don't confuse yourself. It is not something again. Objective, objective means something different. Okay. Let us let us let us let us say it. Let us define. It. Maybe you get confused. What is the difference between objective and subjective? Objective, independent of people's opinion. Independent of people's opinion. Example, the law of nature are true and exist, whether we have an opinion about them or no. They exist and are true always. So this is something objective. So law of nature. So if I say that there is a gravitational law, that make my pen drop to the earth. It, it's going to be dropped to the earth whether I am Houston, I am in Dallas, I am in Cairo, I am everywhere in the world. Is that correct? The yes. So this yes. is something objective or subjective? If I, if, I lift my, if I lift my pen and drop down, is that something objective or subjective? Objective. Objective because it is independent of my opinion. It is gonna, it's going to follow the nature of the law or the laws of nature. On the other hand, something subjective means dependent on people's opinion and emotion. Means coffee is good. I just express a matter or personal test, or I say it is something or ice cream. I don't like ice cream. It is that, that's that something. If I don't like ice cream, is that mean the ice cream is objectively bad or this is something subjective thing? Subjective. Exactly. No, we are we are understand each other. Let me ask you a question. I feel it is raining. Is that objective or subjective? Subjective. Objective. It's objective because it's subjective because it's your own opinion. It what? is subjective. It is subjective. It is raining now. Subjective. Is uh, objective. 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 Okay. Do you see the difference? Do you see yeah. the difference? Okay. Let, let me let me let me uh, repeat this example. We are talking about training. We are talking the same example. But the first one has my feeling. The same, first one has what my feeling. I feel raining. The second one doesn't have any feeling. The second one, I'm saying it is raining. I can mm. I can I can open my window and see outside. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let us go through this. What is moral value? Can you can you can you please uh, mute yourself? George Sammy. Okay. What is definition of moral values and moral duties? I do not know. Moral val value, the goodness or badness or something good or bad. This is a moral value. Moral duty means the obligation to do what is right and not to do what is wrong, like in army. In army, there is a duty. You have to do this, you don't have to do this. This is a duty. But moral value is something, I, I, is a goodness or badness, something good or bad. But moral duty is something right or wrong. We have to distinguish between these. Note that right things to do or moral duty is not identical with which is good, a positive or moral value. For example, a commander in the army can ask his 
soldier to kill someone. It is a moral duty. Although killing is bad, it's something morally, moral value is considered as a bad. Again, he, the commander, asks the soldier to do something morally duty, but not morally uh, value. You see the difference? You see what I'm trying to say here? The difference between moral duty and the moral value? Yes. Okay. So, it is good to work as a doctor, but we are not normally obligated to be become a doctor. You see the difference here? It is good, but we are not obligated morally to become a doctor. We can be comforted confronted with the need to make a choice between several bad options. Our moral duty would be to try to pick the least bad harmful action. Okay, this person called, his name Richard Dawkins, he's an atheist. He say, no good, no evil, and no good. Nothing but blind, pitiless, pitiless indifferences. That means there is, not, there is nothing called evil, there is nothing called good, there is not, nothing at all, and even God doesn't exist. So why we are saying in the premises that if God does not exist, objective moral value and duties do not exist? Here, for example, when a lion killed a zebra, we don't condemn a lion as a murder, correct? Is the lion is a, uh, condemned as a murder in this case, if he killed a zebra? No, because it's but, probably not he's dead. just being a lion. He's doing, he's got to eat the zebra. Just okay. let him eat the zebra in peace. Oh, the lion eats the zebra in peace. But but, but what, do we consider that something good, that lion consider that a murder or no? Well, according to their diet, if it's, if zebras are in their diet, then we don't, um uh, like, consider it as a murder. But... If it's not, then yeah, we have to consider it as a murder. No, because lion is not a human. Lion is an animal. They don't have they don't have this objective moral value, correct? Yes. The They're animal, not really but, that smart. Yes. The animal don't have objective moral value, correct? Yes. Okay. Correct. This is what I'm trying to reach. Okay. A second example. We are not saying this. Belief in God is required to live what a Christian would view as a good and decent life. We are not saying that. Remember, there is a difference between we are saying if God does not exist, objective moral value and duties do not exist, and saying belief in God is required to live what a Christian would view as a good and decent life. We are not saying that. And we are not saying this one as well. Belief in God is required to recognize objective moral value and duties. We are not saying that. We are only saying if one wishes to assert moral value and moral duties exist objectively as opposed to existing subjectively as opposed to existing only in a personal opinion or social convention, the existence of God is required. I will leave you read this sentences alone in, in, quietly in a minute and understand it by yourself before 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 telling me if you understand or not okay do you understand what we are trying to say here or I should repeat. I think for the second one, I think if somebody wishes to uh, do bad things and not do bad things and get commanded. We are trying to say that if someone would like to assert or distinguish between moral value and moral duties objectively, not subjectively, the existence of God is required. So something that we are all agree about, something that we cannot just say, no, this is not, this is subject moral value, or this is uh, something like, we are t talking about killing here in the case of the lion and in 
and zebra. Lion killing a zebra, if this happened in, 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 in human, we should all say this is objectively uh, something. Objectively a murder? Yeah. Objectively okay. a murder? Objective, objectively what? Objectively a murder, because if somebody kills some another person, it's an objectively murder. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah. So objective moral value and duties require God. Objective, again, objective moral value and duties require God. Can someone read this again? Can someone read it loud for us? Can someone read the whole thing, the whole argument? Okay. Uh, I can read it. Okay, moral, argument, moral argument for the existence of God. If God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. Number two, objective moral values and duties do exist. Therefore, God exists. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you all agree with that? If I ask you about the moral argument next time, you will remember this argument? Of yes. Course. Yes. yes. Exactly. Okay. It is very important um, argument for the existence of God. There is five or six arguments for the existence of God. This is one of them. So why why are we saying moral value are exist? Do you know the picture of these two? Sure, one is Hitler and one is Mother Teresa. Which one is good and which one is bad? The good one is on the left. Okay. And, and the one good is one, right. is, the bad one is on the right. Okay, very good. We cannot, we can, the, nobody can say anything about that. So is one of the two morally superior to the other? Morally superior to the other? Yes. Yes. Okay. But one of them are, are a great leader, and he 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 he, he did the World War Two, and he's very famous. But he's not morally superior to Mother Teresa. I agree. I agree. Okay, very good. So objective moral value and duties exist. How we can defend that? Most people, including most atheists, do believe that objective moral value and duties exist. Our moral experience of the world is something as objectively good or evil, right or wrong. And we all agree with that. Most of us, including many of the atheists, feel strongly that rape, torture, child abuse are not just unacceptable behavior, but moral abomination regardless of the moral of the society in which they occur. We all agree that rape, torture, child abuse, killing, and all that are morally unacceptable behavior. We all agree, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so love, generously, self-sacrifice are good in any context, context, context or culture. We will agree. Well, I no, don't... It no, I, I'm, I'm here asking, it doesn't matter if we are believer or unbeliever, if we are atheist or, or, or Christian. Do you all agree? Oh, yeah, we all agree. Okay, so premise number two is easy, correct? Objective moral value and duties exist. So... Generosity, sacrifice, equality. Love your neighbor as yourself. Who said love your neighbor as yourself? Jesus. Jesus. The, the, the atheists don't have this love your neighbor as yourself. They, they have, uh, they, 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 they know love, but not, not as yourself. They know love, but not as yourself. It, it says, like, like I, I still love people, but not as myself. Greed, abuse, discrimination. So this kind of something bad, some, like, like this example of something good, here example of something bad. So God nature, God's nature has love, truth, mercy, patience, create, holiness, goodness, peace, justice. This is God's na nature. So I need someone, I need another one to read this for us for last time. Moral argument, someone else. If God does not exist, Objective moral values and duties do not exist. And objective moral values and duties do exist. Therefore, God exists. Can you say that tomorrow without reading it? Can you still remember that? Yes. Can, if someone asks you about the moral argument, can you tell him that without from your memory, your own memory? 
Yes, because if God wasn't here, then these these duties um were moral values and duties do not exist. Okay, very good. This is this is our, my, my my main objective today is that you memorize this this moral argument, memorizing it. Okay, discussion question. Let me ask you this question. If God is essential to moral truth, then how it's possible for the millions and millions of people who don't believe in God to be have morally and ethically? Can someone answer this? It's really hard. Let's see what is the answer. There can be no objective moral truth without God. And since there are objective moral truths, God exists. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. If someone give a poison to someone else, is something bad or good? Poison, bad. Someone, bad, bad. But, but the science or the atheist will tell you that this person is going to be killed or not killed from getting the poison. But he's not going to tell you if this is good or bad. We are saying that is good or bad because we are objectively using our moral, uh, uh, our objective moral values here to say this poison someone is uh, objectively bad. But the science or the will tell if this is is going to die or not. Let us see another question here: Is something good because God wills, or does God will something because it is good? It, it was in the video. Can you read this question again and try to answer me? If you understand. Wait, I know. Yeah, I understand. Okay. I understand. What is, the, what is your answer? Um, God wills something because it is good. Because when you do good, God will... will um, yeah, I don't know how to say because there's too many wills, but yeah, God will will something good happening. God wills something because God is good. God and the good are the same. That's cool. <laughs> Do you get the answer? Yes. Okay, last question. It is necessary to believe in God for one to be bound by objective morality. Let me give you an example. There can be no objective moral truth without God. Again, there can be no moral objective truth without God. And since there are objective moral truths, God must exist. And this will conclude today's lesson. <clears throat> and again, I will leave you with this one. And uh, hopefully, you will you will you get uh, you understand my my presentation today, and you like it. Okay. It's very hard. <laughs> Very, very hard. It, but what about the video? I showed the video. The video makes it more easier. Yeah, the video makes it more easier. But without the video, it would be more harder. But again, the moral argument is the one that I would like you to, to always carefully read and understand. Because if you understand it, then you can try to give defense to our belief. Let us uh, conclude with prayer. Thank you, our Lord. Thank you, our Lord, for this opportunity that we meet together tonight. Thank you, our Lord, for your patience. Thank you, our, your Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your objective moral values and duties that you teach us. We would like, our Lord, to serve your name in every time and be ready to give defense to the reason of our faith. Please continue with us, our Lord, and Hear us when we pray, thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as in heaven. They are delivered. Forgive us our prayers as we confess. Thank you. Thank you all, and have a good night, and see you next time. Wait, what about the coup? What about the coup? What about the coup? Uh, Kahoot will, uh, Uncle Gergis will do it next time, God willing. Thank you. Uh, uh, uh.